In this video, we take a look at the concepts of heat and work, which are paramount to understand the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, so if we restate the first law, uh, we can say that uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be uh, transformed or transferred. Okay, so it turns out that work and heat are the two ways that you have to transfer energy in and out of systems. Okay, so again, uh, energy can only be transformed or transferred, and there's only actually two ways to transfer that energy, either as work or heat. Okay, so let's then try to explain each one in turn and see how there, there are different uh, uh, types of energy transfer. Okay, so let's start with work, uh, if you will. So for work, we actually know what the definition of work is. We've worked uh, with this before. Uh, work is equal to force times distance. So this is actually something important, uh, something that determines what work is. You need an opposing force. Okay, so uh, an example of work would be something like this. Suppose that you have here a gas inside a cylinder with a movable piston, and then uh, that piston uh, uh, is causing some, some sort of force on the gas because there's an external pressure, right, that's open to the atmosphere, or this is the atmosphere. So you actually have gas collisions right here that are uh, uh, you know, pr uh, applying some force into that gas. Right, so uh, if, the, if you do something to that gas, maybe a chemical reaction, or maybe you elevate the temperature of that gas, and that gas pushes against that piston, uh, against that piston uh, through a distance d, right? So if uh, this piston gets elevated just a little bit, then you're transferring energy out of the system as work. That will, that will actually be what work is. Uh, work is the most useful type of energy transfer because then you can use that uh, elevation of the piston to do something useful. Maybe you can move a crankshaft and, and power a car, move a car forward, or something like that, right? So, so that is very useful. Now, the second type of energy transfer is heat. And heat uh, is a little bit more difficult to define. Uh, there's not a one equation that works for every type of uh, energy transfer as heat. But of course, we have a very good intuition about what heat is. For example, if uh, you have here, again, your system, and uh, uh, suppose that your system is cold and the surroundings are hot, then there's going to be an energy transfer from the surroundings, which are hot, to the uh, system, which is cold. And that way of energy transfer is heat. OK, so, so it looks like uh, heat is something that occurs when you have a difference in temperature. And that is correct, but that is not necessarily true. As a matter of fact, we're going to see examples in which you can have energy transfer as heat even when the temperature doesn't change. Okay, so you can have, uh, you can have here some sort of gas or a chemical reaction uh, under isothermal conditions, right? So the temperature is not changing. And you can still have energy transfer between the system and the surroundings as heat even if there's no difference in temperature. Okay, so that's why uh, heat is a little bit more complicated to, uh, to talk about, uh, but we will see many examples of what this means. Okay, so uh, uh, the, depending on, on uh, the direction of the energy transfer as heat, we're going to talk about endothermic processes or exothermic processes. So an exothermic process is one in which uh, energy is transferred as heat from the system to the surroundings, and the symbol that we're going to be using for heat is Q. Okay, uh, an, uh, an endothermic system is one in which the system absorbs energy uh, from the surroundings as heat. Okay, so that will be endothermic, and this one will be uh, exothermic. All right, so we have defined in general what work and heat are. Now we're going to try to see if we can illustrate these two concepts using a chemical reaction. Okay, so we're going to back, go back to this model of uh, a cylinder and uh, what we're going to do is just uh, now put inside that cylinder a chemical reaction okay so what we're going to have here is in this cylinder which is open to the atmosphere so there is an external pressure that we can write as p sub x and so forth right and then uh, we're going to have here a combustion reaction okay so we're going to have uh, 
fuel, which in this case is going to be a solid and it's going to be urea. And then we're going to burn it with O2, which is a gas. And then the chemical reaction that takes place is as follows. Urea is this substance, NH22CO, it's a solid under ambient conditions. We're going to burn it with molecular oxygen to generate CO2, which is a gas, then uh, water, which is a liquid, and then nitrogen, which is a gas. Right. Uh, informally, notice that even though this is a combustion reaction, if you run it under ambient conditions, which means uh, room temperature 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere of pressure, then uh, the stable phase of water is liquid. So you will actually be generating under, again, those conditions of uh, 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere of pressure, you will be generating liquid water. All right, so let's see uh, how work and heat work uh, in this chemical reaction. All right, so uh, now the first thing that we notice is that uh, you can extract energy as work from this chemical reaction. How do we know that? Well, notice that uh, for every, uh, if you track the, the numbers of uh, uh, moles of gases in reagents of products, notice that in reagents you have 1.5 mole, and in products you will have one mole, and then one mole, a total of two moles. Okay, so for every one and a half moles of gases that you're burning, you're generating two moles of gases in products. What that means is that uh, there is, because you're generating much more uh, moles of gases than you had initially, there's actually a buildup of pressure inside this, this uh, cylinder. And what that means is that that piston actually can be pushed out, okay? And that is work, because you're pushing against an opposing force. Okay, so you can extract work from the system. As a matter of fact, this is how car engines really work. What you have is that gasoline is burned with air, oxygen in air, and that generates an expansion that pushes out a piston and that is coupled to a crankshaft that moves your wheels. Okay, so again, that's the, the definition of work. You're pushing against uh, an external force, an opposing force. So, okay, uh, from this reaction, we can actually extract work. That's great. What about heat? Well, this reaction is exothermic, right? So what that means is that there will be energy transfer as heat as well from the system to the surroundings. A way to track that uh, could potentially be uh, to submerge this whole system in an ice bath, right? So you can uh, fill this with uh, ice cubes, perhaps. And I'm not going to go throughout, but you, you get the gist of this. And then uh, you would observe that uh, some of that ice cubes, uh, some of those ice cubes melt. Okay, so that can only happen uh, if there's energy transfer as heat from the uh, system, which is the chemical reaction, to the surroundings. Okay, so get yeah, beautiful. This is a, again a great example for how uh, energy transfer works. Okay, you can you can have both energy transfers as work and then as heat. Right now, we're going to change a little bit this system uh, to explain a really important aspect of work and heat. What we can do is actually lock this piston in place. All right, so uh, we are not going to let that piston expand, that, that gas expand, pushing against external pressure. Instead, the volume is going to be constant throughout. Okay, so then what's going to happen then is that you have eliminated the possibility of work. Now you can run the reaction, it's the same reaction, you're going to get exactly the same products, but notice that in this particular setup you're not extracting any energy as work. And that is bad because work is, is the useful one. Okay, instead all of the energy transfer will be as heat. And what you actually can uh, uh, prove is that more of the energy in this case, is extracted as heat because more of the ice would undergo melting. Okay, so, so uh, that illustrates uh, the very important concept that work and heat depend on the path of the transformation. Okay, you have a chemical reaction and you're trying to extract work and heat, but it turns out that it matters how you carry out the transformation, that chemical reaction, to the amount of work and heat that you can extract. Okay, so using the language of thermodynamics, we can say that work and heat are path 
dependent. They depend on the way that the process is carried out. Okay, and that is a very important uh, quality of work and heat. As a matter of fact, this illustrates uh, kind of the long pursuits of humankind, right? What we actually want to do all the time is extract as much energy out of combustion reactions as work as possible and minimize the amount of energy transfer as heat. Again, if you think about uh, a car engine, right, the idea is that we, don't, we want to get that gasoline, we want to burn it with oxygen, and then extract as much work, as much of that energy stored in that gasoline as work as possible and minimize the amount of energy that is lost as heat because we're not doing anything really with the heat. That heat eventually ends up in the surroundings and uh, does no good. Right, so we're not really good at it, and it turns out that you know the typical efficiency of a car engine is about 30 percent. Right, so so the total energy that you have stored in gasoline and that you can liberate through combustion, only 30 percent, more or less, is actually transformed into kinetic energy of your car. 70 percent, roughly, is actually completely lost as heat, which is com uh, which is useless. Okay, so again, our goal would be to try to extract as much of the energy as work as possible because work is a useful type of energy transfer and minimize energy, as he, uh, energy losses as heat. Okay, of, of obviously this is very difficult to do and we will study that there's an upper limit to how much energy you, you can extract at work but obviously 30% for a, a car engine is not uh, the upper limit. We can, we, we can actually uh, can extract much more we just don't know how yet or we haven't perfected the way to do this. Okay, so uh, let's wrap up this video then. Uh, we have uh, illustrated the concepts of work and heat with a combustion reaction. And work and heat are uh, the only two types that energy can be uh, can be transferred in a process. Okay? Now, uh, work requires uh, a motion against an opposing force, heat does not. Work is the useful type of energy transfer, heat is the less useful type of energy transfer.